forget you've got to relearn every time we start. <laughs> I know we have too much time off in between. Although this is this was a normal uh, turnaround gap, right? Yeah, it was only only two it, weeks. It was. I. It was only two. Yep, I think so. Oh, I was thinking like longer. It felt longer. Yeah. I mean, I uh, miss I mean, you guys a lot. Yeah, yeah. I was Anytime just thinking. You can uh, hang out with me, it feels long. Right. I was thinking that uh, I don't have anything to talk about, but then I realized that because uh, it's been two weeks, we haven't talked about Soto or Otani. So yeah, a nope. lot has happened. Don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. I, I uh, A lot has not happened. And uh, Matt and I were just talking about Yamamoto. We were like, when it's when it, like, how, how, how much longer does he need? Let's yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think what I didn't Jeff Passon just post yesterday that the money hadn't even started yet, that like the yep. teams weren't allowed to even make their monetary offers until yesterday. So, yeah, they hadn't, they hadn't started until two days ago, I think. Yeah, I think they were just doing their like overall pitches beforehand about like our this is what our how our organization works and we want you to join it or whatever. But like he, I think it was Yamamoto's re- request, right? If I'm remembering correctly, Matt, I think it was his request. Like we don't want to hear about money yet. Uh, yep. Uh, what? Yeah. So it'll be interesting. But I, it's what? fascinating. I mean, I, I, well, I guess there were some people speculating he that it could go as high as three hundred mil. That remains to be seen. But yeah. even two hundred mil for for uh, for a pitcher coming out of Japan, um, I mean, the hype is the hype is fucking real with this guy. It's it's going to be exciting to uh, to see him. Mm-hmm. He's got to be the most hyped Japanese pitcher since uh, what's his face for the Red Sox, right? Um, uh, oh, Daisuke? Was, yeah, Daisuke Matsuzaka. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's interesting, you know, um, I saw a thing literally just a couple hours ago. There was a, a graphic that somebody shared, and, and I didn't verify the stats, but um, I'm, a, I, I'm just assuming it was from a base, like a reputable baseball page. Um, and it was showing uh, Yamamoto's numbers. In a, He pitched 164 innings last season, right? And it showed his numbers, like his, his main numbers. And then it showed like, every other like Japanese pitcher, like a uh, starter who threw 164 innings or whatever in the comparison, I got to say uh, kind of reminded me of, of prime Pedro versus the rest of the league, at least in terms of ERA, like Yamamoto's ERA last year was like 1.21 and the rest of the league was like 3.28 or something. The strikeouts that was not as drastic as Pedro. Um, he doesn't strike out as many as, as pa- prime Pedro did, but just that ERA gap, I was like, wow, this guy is like, seems to be head and shoulders, you know, above. And so I, I, I wonder if he's going to be, you know, not like the Otani of pitchers because Otani's Otani, but like if he might be the type of guy who is better than Matsuzaka, who is better than uh, Tanaka, right? Like those guys were both really solid and like, re- you know, good. But I'm wondering mm-hmm. if Yamamoto, if he might be like somebody who's literally top three Cy Young finisher, like his first season. Like it seems like he could, he could do that. I don't know. Yeah. Well, the, the baseball barbercast boys, uh, Jordan Schusman and Jake Mintz were talking on Monday's podcast about, you know, even, even if you're like going back to Tanaka and Dice K and evaluations and like how you can you know, determine how good someone's actually going to be. And like the data that we have now with, with Statcast and everything suggests that he is like, he is up there with, I, I'm not saying he's Garrett Cole, but like, yeah, he he's up there with like the top echelon. Yeah, um, in terms of spin rate and control and right. you know, all these different things. And so, he's only twenty five, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. he's only twenty five and everything. So I'd imagine that's it, it. It's an indicator that he could be very successful, and I think that's why people are willing to go to that two fifty three hundred mil number. But you, know, you never know; it's still a big adjustment and everything. But I mean, I. I'm excited. Regardless of where he ends up, I, I think it'll be really exciting. But I, I can yeah. remember, I don't know how invested you guys were at the time, but when Tanaka came to the Yanks, I, I don't know if it was, I, I think it was a combination of, okay, we're striking back for the Dice K, uh, but also Tanaka came, if I remember correctly, it was the 2013 season. And as we all know, th- those were some horrific <laughs> uh, teams. So, um, you know, looking forward to watching the Yankees every night, Tanaka was like the thing and he was so good. Like, I don't know if like either one of you can pull it up really quickly. He got hurt that first season. Um, was it Tommy John? I can't remember, but he got Tanaka, hurt. you mean? Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah, at some point. But before that, like, he was pitching lights out. Like, he was so good, going deep into games and everything. And I can't remember a pitcher, you know, even with having Garrett Cole on the Yankees, but, like, somebody I watch on a regular basis, I couldn't remember a pitcher that I got so excited about watching and that his stuff was so nasty and everything. And Tanaka was obviously still very, very good pitcher when he came back from the injury, but I don't think he was ever as good as he was prior to that injury. The first yeah. year, so yeah. You're right. So in twenty four three complete games, a shutout 14. out of just twenty starts, uh two point seven seven ERA and a one thirty eight ERA plus. Wow. Yeah, that he was really season. good that year, and then he was he was very good again in 2016. Those those are probably his two best years, just from a quick look. When did he finish up with the Yanks? 2020. 2020. Oh wow! Well, only through 48 oh. innings that year, though. Just 10 well, games, I mean, but I guess was... yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, 10 10 games yeah. in a 62 games. Where how was it? 60. 60. 60. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, he was only 31 that year. Did he just like yep. go back to Japan and keep playing, or did he straight up retire? Do you guys remember? He wanted to keep Wait, playing you... for the Yankees, and we didn't sign him, so he went back to Japan for a, a year or two. Wow. Wait, he was only 31? He was 31 in his 2020, 2020 remember, season. Remember, so he had the injury so, his first season, and then he partially tore his UCL right. again. Yeah, he kind of had an Otani. Yeah. Yeah. And, no, I mean, I believe he said, I'm playing for the Yankees or I'm going back to Japan. Okay, I don't remember, I remember sounds, that. It sounds familiar. Yeah. And by the what, way, what? sorry, no, go ahead. How, so how old was he? I can't do that math that quickly in my head. How old was he in 2014? First 25. year, he was 25. So he was the same age. Wow. As what Yamamoto okay. will be. Mm-hmm. Holy cow. And uh, and uh, just since we had brought up Dice K, because I, I remember he was really highly hyped as well. I don't know if it was injuries, but I'm looking at his numbers, and as far as I'm concerned, he's got to be considered a bust. I mean, he yeah, no, he he didn't turn out very yeah, good. Yeah, he was he was uh, really good his second year, and he was okay his first year, but after that, he was not good. I don't know, I don't know what it was, but yeah, I think I think Tanaka was largely considered one of the better Japanese I think. pitchers who came over because yeah, you know, Rabu was terrible. Yeah. Um, Nomo was you know, solid. No, no, no one, one had, had his here, moments. Right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, th- those two were in the mid to early '90s, and I think there was like a big lull because Nomo kind of flamed out. Orabu never got going, you know, with the Yanks. So I think a lot of teams were hesitant to even go there. And then, um, yeah, you know, I don't know what what it was if teams were just more um, or. or yeah, I mean, more tolerant. Of, let's be of honest. Let's be honest. And whatnot. The the greatest of all time. Japanese import player, Kei Yagawa, my boy. I, knew it. <laughs> you knew, I was wondering if, if either you knew where I was going. He, he had a negative oh, 0.5 yeah. career war in uh, in uh, how many innings did he throw in his career? Uh, 71.2 innings in his yeah, career. But I've, I've joked, but, but I've he joked had... before, he's lived in Scranton longer than I have in my life. <laughs> Remember, uh, though, was... he, had, he had one of the best performances ever coming out of the bullpen. I think it was when... Was it when Karstens got his shin shattered, and Agawa oh, came in out of the Carstens. bullpen? Yeah, wow. And and like basically pitched like shutout ball for nine innings. I don't remember this. Okay. Something? No, 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 no. It was just like a late August game, but it was, oh, okay. I remember like he well for, for one once. game he played well for one yeah. game. <laughs> oh my god! Wow, gosh, that was I mean, such see, a horrible signing. Let me see if I can I can find that because now was I'm he curious. like a revenge signing because or revenge was he like a reaction signing to something else I can't remember he, he was signed the same year that uh, Dice K was I believe he was okay I, I thought that maybe that's what it was was he I thought I thought Dice K was like twenty ten eleven or so no, Dice K's first year was oh seven yeah okay I remember so then, I remember yeah. he was the other mark pitcher on the market and it was not not good. Yeah. yeah. No, no. Okay, uh-uh. Game law. I mean, even even hitters. I mean, I was just looking yesterday. Uh, I don't know why Matsui showed up in my feed for something, but I think I I saw obviously him each, too. each row is uh, yeah. the, 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 the go the as far as I'm oh, concerned. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you know, just, just incredible. But then uh Matsui, you know, had a had a decent career. Oh, yeah, somebody somebody, really somebody career. tweeted out yeah, somebody tweeted out a uh video of his first homer and his last homer. I saw I had forgotten. 
yeah, I'd forgotten that he was on the Rays. So I looked yep. up his stats, you know, just to see what, what he did after his Yankee days and, and everything. But Oakland I was like, too, for a year. Yep. Yeah. Oakland, Anaheim or Los Angeles, whatever they, they call themselves. Oh yeah, that's the right. The Angels. Organization. Yep. 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 But I'm trying to think between, you know, him and Ichiro, who else was a solid hitter before Shohei? Uh, like Japanese specifically? Japanese, yeah. I feel like there's got to be somebody before Ichiro but, or, or around the same time, but I can't remember. I can't think of, of any off the top of my head. We're probably we're probably missing like some obvious ones. It's going to be like really embarrassing. Um, I mean, I, I keep thinking of that guy on the Rays, but he wasn't. He was just a Yankee killer, right? That's uh, Jim and Choi. Yeah, yeah, he's Korean. <laughs> no Korean. Oh, okay. So not even. Yeah. Um, well, Matt, did remember you find he that also game? played for the Yankees. No, oh, Jim right, and Choi yeah. did. Yeah. God, I we have had no for, like, memory four games. about it. I have no memory. Yep. Okay, four games. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, did you find that game that a guy went through? Um, no, and I, so now I'm wondering how much did I did I guess? Let you guys all. <laughs> <laughs> Matt just made it up in his head. Yeah, that's he right. The guy would have, have, his have had one good moment. <laughs> Kaz Matsui, uh, I, I can't remember. He was a decent uh, player, yeah. but I can't remember if he was much a, of a hitter. What, what yeah, about, I don't, what about I don't, Shinjo? I don't think he was. What's that, Matt? You guys remember Shin, Shinjo? Not really. No, no? okay. I'll, I'll, I'll continue. I'd just the name is like the name is familiar, but I can't remember like anything about him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think Ichiro and Matsui were like I mean Ichiro was way at the top and then yeah. Matsui was like a step below and then Shohei got it's probably between well I, I don't know I guess it's been on what you want right like yeah. do you want Ichiro who has 260 something hits a year do you want Shohei who can pop 40 something homers a year like right I mean Ichiro uh, legend you know legend says that he could have popped 40 homers right. a year if he wanted to but yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, I'm not a liar. So his fifth game of the season, <laughs> um, and it, well, I was right. So he Karsten started the game. He went out. Why was he? I thought he was a bullpen guy. Karsten gave up. I he, thought he so. Faced two batters and gave up two hits on the second. Second batter hit a liner off his shin, broke his leg, and then Agawa came in and pitched six two hit inning you know six innings of two hit ball against the red sox um okay. that was it everything else kind of sucked uh, <laughs> you know if you look at Wait, his, his earned, earned runs in his other games like seven two two seven eight two four five three two five but he Ugh. had that one game where right. he didn't give up anything so yeah oh man anyway, hilarious i'm glad i'm not yeah. crazy yeah good job <laughs> good memory very impressive yeah yeah. I think I tried to black him out of yeah. <laughs> all my memories. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Seriously. Was, was he worse than Carl Pavano? He he had to have been, right? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, did Pavano, like, even... How many pitches did he even fucking throw for us? I mean, I feel like he threw at least one full season or close to a full season. Let's see. And at least he had success before and after. The, you know, he's kind of like a... Not... Not exactly like Sonny Gray, but... Yeah, he did throw 100 innings for us his first year, and then 11 innings and 34 innings the next two years. So he didn't do much, but he, he did get to 100 innings that first year. So that's something, I guess. Yeah. What it, year was that? That was 05. And, oh, uh, and his, uh, let's see, his ERA was 477. His ERA plus was 89. So he was not very good. <laughs> that year that he threw 100 innings yeah i mean he literally had like one legitimately good season in his career and that was 04 and and then we gave him that deal the only other year where he had an era plus that would put him like above average was 2000 with montreal but he only threw 97 innings uh mm -hmm. literally and then actually you know what he was okay with minnesota in 2010 he was okay. I think he was. Yeah, I think he. I think he heated up at the end of '09, if I remember correctly. Um, the Twins were up one nothing, like in the seventh or eighth, and he was still pitching in Game Three at the at the old Metrodome when A Rod hit the 
tying homer or some something like that. One one of his tying homers during that run um, to the to the World Series. So because I just remember being so pissed off that Pavano was pitching well. <laughs> against, yeah, right. Yeah, you know, the Yankees. <laughs> I mean, uh, but. Uh, we're, uh, I gotta say, I'm just reflecting that we're, uh, the fans are going to be happy. We're really bringing it tonight with the, uh, Kayagawa <laughs> Carl Pavano, uh, content. It's really good. Well, that's, we're setting up for the Juan Soto. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah. Come on, right. I want to talk about Esteban Loiza. Come on. Oh, Loiza. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, for, for every Sean Chacon, there's an Esteban Loiza. That's a deep cut yep. for all you Yankees fans. Oh, uh-huh. my God. Man, Matt, you, I feel like you would do really well on, on Immaculate Grid with some of these guys that you remember. I mean, fucking I, Jeff Karstens. Like, I remember the name, but I would not pull it yeah. out of my I brain. I do do very well on Immaculate Grid. Thank you very much. You, you do. Yeah. Okay. All I right, play all fairly right. often. And, yeah. Okay. Um, I'd say, on average, I can get about seven of the ten without looking – or seven of the nine without looking anything up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then I, oh, I but you will look, oh, see, I never look stuff up. I, I, yeah. I try to do it without looking anything up. Uh, but uh, – yeah, I, I, I'd say I'm, I, I'm fairly good there. Again, random shit, but you know. Yeah, no, I'm sure, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure you're nailing it over there. Um, Actually, I got, I got, right. I just started playing New York Times Connections. That, what is that? I never one. even heard of this. Yeah, what is that? Um, it's it's the new Wordle, um, that I was unaware of until last week. Oh, um, okay. But they changed the name of it, but it's like the same thing. No, as no, no, no. It, it's just it's the new phenomenon that New York, the New York Times did. So it's oh, it gives you sixteen words, and you're supposed to make four groups of four words. Um, hmm. But they're like not always what you think. Like, okay. Um. So like they're 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 odd categories, but there's there's overlapping similarities that make you wonder like, okay, could this be this category? Like it doesn't tell you the categories. You just have to do a word association and figure it out. Um, so like today's were like, um, let's see if I can get it up. New York Times. Also more thrilling content. You're welcome. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So yeah, Matt, Matt, while you're looking that up, Ethan, I want to pose a question to you. Okay. I already asked you partially this question in our text. You know, Soto goes to the Yanks and I asked you, does that change your opinion on Brian Cashman, who you said you would, you, you basically disowned on a <laughs> podcast uh, episode back in uh, October or so. What if the Yankees also get Yamamoto? What's, what's your feeling about Cashman then? I mean, so, you know, I think, I think disown is maybe a little bit too, too strong. I, I wouldn't say I disowned. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I, all I was saying, okay. Maybe I came off a little strong and it sounded like that. But my main point was that I had been Cashman's like staunchest defender for ages, right? Like I was the guy, not just on the pod, but just like, just in general. I mean, you guys know this and like so many Yankee fans shit on Cashman or are skeptical or whatever. And I was like, listen, Cashman has been amazing. All things considered, like if, if the Yankees got rid of him, like the rest of the league would would be desperate to to poach him. Like I I think he is. I think he's one of the best executives in the game. Right. Like I was his staunchest defender. Uh, the main thing with all of that was just I was shocked at his comments. Right about the analytics and about G. And so I wouldn't say disown necessarily, but it just made me be like, okay, why have I been his staunchest defender? And he's going to come out and be a fucking moron like this. Like now now I'm just going to kind of be like, okay, he's. He's a GM and he's going to make some good moves and some bad moves, but I'm not going to put in the effort to be his defender anymore. Not after that shit. Uh, now, the Soto deal, I think, is a great deal. If he gets Yamamoto, that's awesome, too. But I'm still not going to go back to being as much of a uh, a, a, a Cashman um, fan, Homer, as, as I was before. I, I, I can't, you know, the G stuff, I understand maybe he was, like, fed up and whatever, but, like... And apparently he smoothed things over with with G's agent or whatever, supposedly. But the analytics comment, that's harder for me to get past. To be to be saying shit like that in 2023, I have a real hard time with. So yeah, getting Soto is awesome. And if he gets Yamamoto, awesome. Um, but I'm I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna sit here talking about how he's like 
the best GM in the game anymore because because I'm 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 too disillusioned from from those from those comments from the winter meetings. So the one thing I, that I've, as I've ruminated on it, like that that doesn't make sense. The uh, the analytics stuff just doesn't make sense to me. Is if if you don't care about analytics and you got a small department, then why did you hire Matt Blake? Right. Yeah. Exactly. He is an or, analytics or, genius. Or Dylan from... Dylan Lawson, right? I mean, wasn't yeah. The, the yeah. So I don't know if it's just. Maybe maybe Cashin's playing 3D chess and we're we're stuck on 2D. I don't know. Maybe but. or maybe he's just frustrated. Maybe he like sees all of the stupid fucking Yankee fans bitching all the time. He's maybe he sees that shit on the internet and he just was really frustrated and he just lashed out. But it's not actually true. Like I I don't know. But either way, I was I just yeah. thought that that was not a, not a good look. I agree. Yeah. So, go, but if we Cash, get, we can go jump off a building for all I care. <laughs> I wouldn't go. Year. He does it every year for charity. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was like, well, I wouldn't go that far. But, okay, that's pretty funny. But no, I mean, if we get Yamamoto, that'd be amazing. I also saw that there are rumblings that the Brewers are open to trading Corbin Burns um, mm-hmm. and that the Yankees might want to be in on that. Now, I don't know how much left we have in terms of making a big trade, right? But um, we have plenty. Stop, stop prospect cradling. Yeah, you think for for somebody that burns his level, you think we can we can trade for Soto and Burns in the same off season? Yeah, get rid of either Volpe or Cabrera. Um, get rid of I don't know some someone else. Keep keep Dominguez because he can be a center fielder. But you would they, get rid of Volpe they, that that quickly. I mean, DJ's got to play somewhere. Oh my god. <laughs> Are you trying to? Are you trying Just to make kidding. me like vomit all over the place? Just kidding. Jesus I got Christ! A, I got a good laugh. That's all I wanted. Uh huh. <laughs> Fucking a! Oh my God. I don't know. I'm. I'm just saying. I'm sick of the prospect cradling. Yeah, no, Just I mean, I, I feel that. Trade. No, and actually, you know, I agree with you. I, I know, I used to be much more into the prospect cradling, but I've kind of, I've, and I've kind of come along. Uh, to your way of thinking though, Kyle, because, you know, I'm looking at the, um, I'm looking at the trade for Soto and I got to say, I'm perfectly happy with it. I'm not going to be missing any of, I mean, I'll miss Michael King a bit. I think he has a chance to be like a really good starter and he was an excellent reliever. Like I'll miss King, but the rest of that, like I am, I would make that trade a hundred times out of a hundred to get a year of Juan Soto. Absolutely. Now, did you hear there was a, an interesting wrinkle involving King with all this? Apparently, they cleared it with Garrett Cole first. Yeah, they're, mm. they're best friends. He yeah, was, they're he was really at, close. He was at King's wedding. Yeah, oh, I didn't really know close. that. Wow. Yeah. So that was an interesting yep. wrinkle. Um, Holy shit. Yeah, um, Ryan Hoke just posted a picture today from, I'm pretty sure it was this past weekend, the same same day Toddy and I got married, um, that uh, King and his wife got married. Yeah. And, and Cole was there. Okay, now, that's fascinating. But 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 while we're talking soda, I do want to say because I, I I took the screenshot mm-hmm. to bring up bring up for the podcast. This is not what's on the screen now, but so to put it, just about how good a deal it is and how we need to sign Soto. For three stats that this this writer brought up that I should have cited their name, uh, but to put things in perspective, quote: Soto Soto is younger than Adley Rutschman. Oh wow! And he already has six seasons under his belt. God. He has oh, a better shit. career OPS plus than Frank Thomas, Hank Aaron, Joe DiMaggio, and Willie Mays. Oh, <laughs> among my God. many other Hall of Famers. And among the top 10 st- statistical players similar to Soto through his age 24 season are Harper, Frank Robinson, Trout, Griffey Jr., Miggy Cabrera, and Eddie Matthews. So, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, he's uh, fucking yeah. amazing. So saying there's a chance he's going to make the Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I so as long as he doesn't prove to be one of these, you know, because every once in a while, especially with pitchers, uh, it seems we get these guys who are just busts in New York. With you know, they just can't handle the Yankees for whatever reason. As long as he is not that, as long as he, even if he's not spectacular this year, as long as it's just like a solid Juan Soto year. I want the Yankees to give him whatever. Like I want him for the yep. next ten years, absolutely. Fifteen yeah. years, like give him fifteen years and six hundred million if that's what it takes. Like, like, yeah. As long as he doesn't bust in New York, I mean, God, how 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 can you not want to get 
get him for the long run. I mean, he's, he's fucking amazing. And it's I like, think, I, sorry, go ahead, Matt. I think Boris is going to really push it though. Cause. Oh, I'm sure. And as he should Soto, I mean, so, I mean, how often do people, so this, this season is going to be his age 25 season, I think. Right. How often do superstars of that caliber hit free agency when they're like going into their age 26 season? I mean, yeah. it's, it's Entering incredibly rare. Um, so like he he absolutely should hit the market and get as much as he can get, you know, 100 percent. But I mean, mm-hmm. you know, it's funny because all these people are talking about like, oh, Juan Soto in, in, in New York at Yankee Stadium with the short porch and right field. Oh, he's going to hit a million homers. But I'm sure you guys have seen this. If you look at his spray chart, it, it's like a work of art. He's not a yeah. now. Don't get me wrong. If he decides he wants to be a pull hitter, I'm sure he can. And I'm sure he can hit a bunch of homers. But like looking at his spray chart, he just hits it with power everywhere. It's like a thing of beauty. So I'm kind of just hoping he hits like maybe 25, 30 homers with like 40 to 50 doubles and walks 130 times and just does his thing and just just hits it hard everywhere. Um, but but we'll see. I'm I'm really excited about about Soto. Did you guys see the stat? I, I can't even remember who it was or how long ago it's been, but it's been several seasons since any Yankee has hit more than like 39 doubles in a season and Soto Grisham uh, Verdugo. Did they sign one other player? There's like four guys on the team now who last year with, with their old teams hit more than that in doubles. Oh, is that right? Or something like that. So is that the new, is that the new, uh, Hot topic stat now, like oh, <laughs> that's the new analytics trend. Angle. Yeah. <laughs> we want doubles. Yeah, right. doubles well, are where they're at, I guys. Think, you know, I think that doubles are underrated, though. Like, I think that we we get caught up so much with like homers and shit, but just extra base hits in general, just doubles and triples, just people who can hit it hard into the gaps, right? Mm-hmm. Is like so valuable, and I don't think we think about it enough. But like Freddie Freeman getting like 50, however many doubles he got last year. Like, like that shit is really, really good and really valuable. So um, I personally think we should like be paying it, paying more attention to that. Yeah. But I think that does play into launch angle because like when you think about baseball, when we were a kid, right. And you think about traditional doubles, doubles, like in the gap, those were lower line drives, right? Like not, I mean, high enough to get over the the shortstop's head or the second baseman's head. But, you know, we're talking lower line drives, no chance to get out of the park or whatever. And that's just a rare thing these days because of the launch angle and the way that players are being taught to swing the bat and whatnot. So I don't I don't exactly know how you reintroduce that skill, if you will. But yeah. It would be, I totally agree though. Like, I mean, looking at total bases and, and everything like that's, that's always been a stat that I thought was really important, you know, for an offensive player. So, and I don't, I don't know. It, it, it's the whole like strikeout problem though. You know, yeah. Baseball and, and just putting the ball in play in general. Right. Um, that, that I think concerns people, but it was, I, I wish I could remember who the player was and how long it's been, but I was like, are the Yankees the only team that doesn't hit doubles or is this like a, a trend across major league baseball? I, I don't know. Yeah. That's Outside really interesting. <laughs> right. Oh, you know what, Matt? I think I have seen this game before maybe, but it's been a while. Um, really quickly though. <clears throat> um, while we're on the Yankees, cause we actually haven't texted about this, but I'm curious for your thoughts. So when we traded for Verdugo, I was, I was, I looked at his, um, I was just looking at his baseball reference page, just kind of reviewing like what he's done. Right. Cause the Yankees have been targeting him for like a long time. They've been wanting him. He's not that good. Like, like he's okay, but he's not that good. So what I want to know is, you know, right now, apparently, <clears throat> apparently the, 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 the Yankees said that they, they don't plan on trading him. Like they do plan on keeping him. Like, cause some people were thinking that they, they got him to use him as a trade chip, but mm-hmm. What I kind of would prefer now, Trent Grisham cannot hit at all, but he is like a really, really good defender. And as of right now, we're talking about putting judge in center field, which is going to be a lot of wear and tear on a 32 year old who is six, seven and 280 pounds. Am I the only one who like, I would rather get rid of Verdugo, get over their fucking obsession with him for whatever reason that is. 
put Grisham in center, put Soto in left and put judge in right and GDHs. And that way we at least have like a really good defensive center fielder. And we're not putting that, that amount of strain on judge. It seems like this isn't going to happen, but like why else? I mean, I guess Grisham is just going to be the fourth outfielder or whatever as of now. But as far as I'm concerned, I'd rather have him be the starter and have a really good D out there. <clears throat> Counterpoint, I wish they would just make G go away. <laughs> you you just make so okay, but well that's the other thing though. Have you seen any of these articles lately about how apparently G is like he's like angry and he's like getting after it this off season and he really wants to he's, Yeah. He's but, apparently slimmed down big time. Which which is so. awesome and I and I, I commend him for staying, you know, hard at work and I think I hope it shows results in the field. But I feel like I can go back to, you know, fifty percent of the the previous off seasons he's been with the Yankees and find a similar article. Yeah, probably. Um, you know, maybe that isn't the, the I, I don't know. I mean, I know they said this year he's focusing on athleticism. Like, yeah. <laughs> he needs to be able to run again. Right. Um but I I, I don't know. Uh I, I saw an interesting and this was just a writer stirring up shit and trying to posit a potential trade, but they were saying trying to they were saying we should trade G back to the Marlins for Jorge Soler. <laughs> oh, I saw He's that. A free agent. Oh, then get rid of maybe it was get rid of him. And, is he? I'm pretty sure he's a free agent. Okay, well, that was what they were talking about. Get you know, send. I, send I did. Back I did saw Miami. that they were interested in him. Yeah. 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 Like really, I, I don't know. I just I'd rather at I this point I'd almost there. rather take a Verdugo with an OPS plus above 100 than a G with an OPS plus below. Like, <laughs> well, and Matt, I think you just answered the question. For Ethan, I don't think there are any real suitors for G. I think he's determined to make it work in New York anyway. And I think there's a really good chance that he gets injured at some point. And so I think all this is a moot point because they will need that depth. And I think they're just trying to have more major league depth versus like the Billy McKinney's and yeah, um, uh, Jake uh, Bowers of, right. of the past and everything that they, they sign on these minor league deals, or even Carpenter, you they, know. We've and, traded McKinney and Bowers. <laughs> I know, I know. They, they've they they've definitely gotten good value out of them. I, I totally understand that. But I, I think that I think it yeah. is just depth, and I think they're hoping that um, Dominguez comes back in, what, June or whatever, I, I think is when he's uh, um, projected. To oh, come wow, back, that's, but... that's sooner than I thought. I thought it was going to be the whole year. Well, Harper came mm. back real quick, right? So maybe they're hoping Dominguez is going to do something similar. Or may- maybe like our yeah, medical Harper, technology. Yeah, Harper didn't just... play the field. Harper just hit. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe I'm wrong. I, I don't know. But, you know, I think, I think Dominguez is part. I think Dominguez is like a Volpe where they're like, he is part of the plan no matter yeah, what. Yeah, yeah. You know, type thing. So... You know, I just, I just don't see them. I, I just, I, it doesn't make sense, but it does make sense because you, you just see the inevitable injury coming to somebody. If it's not G, it'll be someone else. And and if Charge they're all again. healthy, then, then they can rotate through and keep everybody fresh, you know, in, in theory. Right. Um, because, you know, hopefully you get a healthy Rizzo, you get a productive Torres, you get a productive Glaber. And you get a DJ's the starting third baseman from what Booney said. So, yep. you know, there, there you go. You, you, you have your middle, the infield is all set. And, you know, who is ever going to platoon with Trevino at catcher, if that's going to be Austin, Austin Wells or, yeah, or, or whoever, like, you know, so it's really the outfield where I think that DH spot and that rotation is going to come into play, but it's also the depth piece because if you start judge and center, and Grisham gets the day off to start, you know, then you can move judge over to right later in the game and, you know, move, move Trent into center and, you know, take out Verdugo or, you know, whatever it is. Like it, it does give Boone some flexibility yeah. that I don't I, know I just, that he's had in a while. I'd just love to see the DH spot open for Rizzo for a day or DJ for a day, right. Or judge for a day. Yeah. Like I'd hate to, I'd love to give him a chance out of the field. But like, why, why does Rizzo need, DH. He's a first baseman. Every once in a while, you get beat up. 
Well, I know. I'm just I'm worried about his concussion. Yeah, I'm worried about his recovery yeah. from that. I I just I after the way the Yankees handled it this year and just like totally shit the bed on it. I'm I'm just hoping that his recovery is, is being handled properly because he was playing so well before that happened. Like he was hitting the snot out of the ball last year. Um, yeah. So and he and he he was 33 last year. This is gonna be his age 34 season coming up. You know. Um, yeah. So I really hope he's going to be okay. We'll we'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Well, so how about Shohei? I mean, conspiracy awesome. theory is he timed his contract, his deferred payments to start up. Great is Bobby Bonilla's deferred payment stopped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah. He he just was dead set on having Shohei Otani Day and. Instead of Bobby Bonilla Day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Uh, it was so funny. Um, <laughs> so I do want to, I'm going to share one more thing. Give me a second. Because I want to talk through with you guys time value of money. Oh, boy. Here we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Share our window. Okay. Also, while, while Matt's doing that, uh, definitely, I agree, Ethan. I would have done that trade 100 out of a hundred times, I think Soto is going to have a really good year. I think the Dominican presence in New York is, is something he's excited about. And I think will actually help him. Yeah. With, you know, some of the pressures and there'll and be like fans so, going crazy for him. Like at every home yeah. game. Yeah. 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 And, and, and I think we've seen that, you know, with our, with the Japanese players who've come over, for example, like with Tanaka, with Matsui and everything, like they, they didn't fold under the pressure. Right. So yeah. I, I don't I don't see it's it's just more you know it's he's a Boris client so we're not getting an extension now we're not going to get one mid season like it's going to be you know go through the season and keep your fingers crossed that if he has a good season that we can dish out the four hundred mil or whatever it's going to take to sign him. Oh, I think it's well. going to be at least five hundred at this point mm-hmm. with like inflation and everything the way that we're I mean Mike Trout got four twenty six however many years ago that was and and yeah, what Soto. Did Judge got 360, but he was already like 30 or 31. Um, yeah. So Soto being yeah, like 90, 25 or 26, I think I think Soto is going to end up getting 500 with people bidding for him. I wouldn't be surprised. Like I said before, if he wants long, long term, I wouldn't be surprised if it gets up to 600. But obviously, we'll yeah. we'll find out. Hey, year, maybe but... maybe they defer a bunch of money, like yeah. our friend Shohei. Exactly. All right, Matt. Um, yeah. So. I try to explain this to you guys in text, but th- if you think about it this way, right? If, if you give me a, you know, think about us 20 years ago when a dollar in your pocket could buy a 20 ounce Coke out of a vending machine. Um, and a dollar now you need, you need $2 to buy that same Coke out of the vending machine now, right? 20 years later, right? If you gave me $2 now, and said, in 20 years, how many Cokes can you buy with this $2? It's probably not going to be a one Coke. It's probably going to be less than that. Um, so this this is trying to figure out, basically, for all the deferred money that he's going to make in years 11 from 20 from now, what is it actually worth in today's dollars? And and it's, you know, obviously you can't predict a lot of this. You get, a lot of it relies on the math behind the discount rate, which I don't understand how to explain to you guys. So basically, that's that's a, a amalgamation of in, interest rates and inflation and what you kind of project the value of money moving forward. But mm-hmm. the idea is at a discount rate of 4.4%, which is what at John Becker uses here, um, 10 years from now, or you know, 10 to 20 years from now, that $68 million is actually worth $44 million in today's money accounting for inflation and the fact that prices go up and the fact that if you took that $44 million and invested it at a discount rate of 4.4%, you probably could turn it into $68 million in 10 years. Um, okay. So if you're looking at it in terms of, even though that number is huge, right? That $70 million, $700 million number is huge because it's pushed so far in the future. What would you need to actually spend and actually write down today, whether you're investing it or you're buying an annuity, to guarantee that seventy million a year, ten to twenty years from now, and that's the idea that that they're getting at right here. So mm. AAV, if you look at here, it's average mm. annual value. So um, if the present value of that sixty-eight million is actually forty-four million dollars, you know, sixty-eight million ten years from now is estimated to be forty-four million dollars in today's value. 
plus the $2 million salary they're going to pay him, you know, and then you multiply yeah. it by the 10 years of his contract. It means his, his, you know, you're looking at his contract is close to a $500 million contract, which is what a lot of people thought he was going to make in the first place. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's almost like Shohei said, I want a $500 million contract. Pay me, you know, pay me 10 years from now with interest. What does that come to? Like, mm. and here's what you get. Um, That's really interesting. interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so that is the genius behind what Los Angeles did. And it's what you saw the Mets do. And that's why Bob, Benito, like um, with the whole Bernie Madoff Ponzi scheme back in the day and the old Mets owners, right? They thought that, well, if I, yeah. if I defer this money far enough out and I've got a great investment where I can park the money that I would pay him now in this investment, I can make money on that money and then pay him less than what it's actually worth in the future. Um, Spoiler alert, it didn't work as a Ponzi scheme. Um, <laughs> and, you know, wh why Why you think, well, that might be not be advantageous for the player. Um, it is in the sense that Bobby Bonilla has had guaranteed income yeah. years and years and years after he's playing. So, a million dollars is still a fucking lot of money. And yeah, you know, so yeah. he doesn't have to worry about um, wasting his money or losing his money. He's got that guaranteed income for another 10 years, right? So that is where it's advantageous for the player. Um, and, and their player's taking on some risk, but the team is taking on risk. Um, now, if you look at all the deferred money that the um, Dodgers have, I saw a graphic on it. I think between Freeman, Betts, and Otani, they're going to, you know, the, the 2035 Mets are going to be paying, excuse me, Mets, the 2035 Dodgers are going to be paying $80 million a year. The yeah. players that aren't even playing. Oh, I saw so that. Yeah, that is, yeah. That is <laughs> a difficult part. You know, that, that that is part of the gamble, right? Um, but if they can use their clout and their bank and yeah. their marketability and their TV contracts to, you know, make sure they take care of that as a liability on the books, it's going to be worth it for them. And I think that is, yeah. you're going to see a lot of changes in the next round of collective bargaining because of this, right? I'm I'm assuming there are plenty of other owners who are just pissed off about this. Um, you know, some who are rightfully pissed off, like the other big spenders, and some who I don't think are are rightfully pissed off, but are just small market teams that are milking money out of the system anyway. So, mm -hmm. um, right, you know, you, you look at Shohei's annual or total value of its contract is worth more than a number of teams are entirely. Like I think. His contract alone is worth more than the Reds. Um, wow. So, you, you know, that's going to make someone like the Reds pissed off and say we could never do something like this. But, oh, well. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's well, that... math with Matt to all of our math whizzes out there. I'm probably wrong. I haven't taken my corporate business finance class since 2012. So I probably I probably butchered something. Please feel <laughs> feel. Uh, free to write me all your comments at ethan.erts at gmail.com. Um, <laughs> uh, Ethan, that is your actual email. I'm sorry. There, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no dot. Ah, okay. <laughs> he wants people to know. All six of our fans are welcome to email me anytime they want. <laughs> Well, that's the hidden, you know, the hidden trick of G Gmail accounts, right? Like is, the dots don't actually matter. Is that right? Dots don't matter. So yeah, if if you put Rudy dot 66 in there, it's the same as Rudy 66. So, oh, okay. Um, yeah. That's funny. Great way though. If you want to register multiple accounts to like get like contest entries or something though, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, anyway, well, and like the, what you said, Matt, I think is definitely true where the owners, especially the quote unquote small market owners are going to be pissed off about that. But the hard part about all this is you got to get the players to buy into a new CBA that doesn't allow for something like this and to get the players to agree on it. I don't think it's going to happen. Right. Like, yeah, <laughs> especially when Shohei was one that came and said, Hey, let's do this. Right. Like, yeah. Right. That, again, and that that's the brilliance of it all. That's the the frustrating thing, but also the brilliant thing. So uh, they're they're definitely set up, especially when you add Glass now in the mix. Um, you know, you've got Walker Buehler coming back. You've got um, what? Uh, who's the young prospect they got coming up? Plus Mookie, plus Freddie. Like, 
They still need to shore up pitching, though, even with Bueller coming back and Gonsolin coming back and whoever else. Like, you don't know what you're going to get. But as long as they can get, like, a somewhat reliable starting rotation, I wonder if they go out and get somebody like like Jordan Montgomery or something. If they can get themselves, like, three really solid, reliable starters, it's, it's hard to imagine how they get beat. Except for the fact that, like, as we have seen, the playoffs are crazy. I mean, the Braves last year, who were one of the greatest offenses in history, who also had a really solid rotation loss in the first round right i mean it could be that in a short oh second round in a short series it could be that like otani Betts, and freeman all go cold and 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 you lose three out of four games and boom you're gone right so so you you know you never know but like god that dodgers lineup especially if they do shore up that rotation looks fucking looks scary yeah, and especially if like Lux comes back and that's it. is yeah, healthy Lux, and, that's right. and good. Yeah, yeah. Although, frankly, to yeah. be honest with you, I still see the Braves as being a better team and a scarier team. Like that top yeah. three for the Dodgers is amazing and historic and like really fun and cool for baseball. But like in terms of an overall team, I still see the Braves as being the best team in the major leagues, like by a solid margin, uh, well, just like last in, year. And, and Mister uh, Anthopolis, that's how you say his name. He's yeah, doing his yeah, thing still, Anthopolis. right? Like. He's building the exact team he wants through trades. Uh, we, we brought up Matt Carpenter earlier, right? They he, they they basically took his player option this year. Um, they, they traded for him to get another pitcher with the trade, and then cut him right away. So they yeah. they told they told San Diego, okay, we'll we'll take him, we'll take his contract, we'll still pay it all, even though they cut him. Um, and because we want this other pitcher, so like yeah, they, they've been very very active on the trade market to build the bullpen they want. Um, yeah, including trading yeah. away some, as Colin was saying, don't cradle these prospects. Some formerly highly touted prospects who have had difficulties here. Like basically, mm-hmm. hey, what have you done for me now? If you if you're not performing in these past two years, if you're injured, whatever, good luck. Go make your go make your name with another team. Um, but, you know, we're going to trade you you away as an asset while there's still value. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how many? I'm trying to think off the top of my head. I feel like the Tigers had a pretty solid homegrown core when they had, you know, their nice little run there in the mid to late 2000s. Uh, obviously, the Yankees had their dynasty with with Mo and the core four and Bernie and everybody. But like, come on, really? How often are your core players homegrown players? Mm-hmm. That that take you all the way for a championship. To a smaller extent, Strasburg and Harper. Oh no, Harper was gone by the time they won. Harper was gone. Oh, yeah. never mind. Oops. Yeah, so it was Yay, just Philadelphia. Just Strasburg. Ryan Zimmerman might have still been on that team. I think he R- was. Rodon home was. Rodon. Before mm-hmm. his, you know, joints started yeah. failing and his legs fell off and his he forgot to play baseball. Mm-hmm. I think R- Rodon or Rodon. Wait, wait, is that his name? Rodon. No, if, Carlos, I mean, if Rendon, you were, Rendon, yeah. excuse me. Oh, Rendon. you're thinking of Anthony Rendon. Rendon. That's yeah. who you're oh, thinking Rendon. of. Oh, okay. Yeah, Rendon. Oh. Rendon basically had the baseball, the, his health and baseball ability sucked out of him like a Space Jam character. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, yeah, I just, well, he went to the Angels. Yeah, yeah exactly. So they gave him an insane field. contract, too. But, yeah, yeah, I guess he was maybe the closest they have to a, a homegrown core, right? Like. Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm I'm just I'm just saying in general, how often does it what the Yankees had in that dynasty, how often does that happen? Not even just the, the dynasty itself in terms of four championships in five years, six appearance six appearances in eight years, but I'm talking about like a a core of like four to six players who are homegrown that bring you home a championship. Maybe those Giants teams, Posey who uh, who would have been the other guys? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, right. Exa- exactly. Yeah. And, and like, but this is what I'm saying. Like, the and even even those um, those Yankee teams, like they had Matt. What you were just describing with the Braves and like them going after the depth and like taking on contracts to get the pieces that they want and dumping play. Like that was that was the recipe for the Yankees in the '90s. You know that they did that all the time. You know, type thing. So I, I just like that's the part where I'm like, why why do teams get so hung up on trying to build like a core of four to six players to build around when you can go out and get a proven player 
like it, and it you just you 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 almost have to be you have to be like Anopolis is and be aggressive because you can't wait for a player to hit free agency anymore. Well, so I was going to say it, it, it's cheaper. That's why teams do it. It's cheaper to right. try and right. build a Absolutely. court. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Hundred percent agree. Yes, and and I get that. Like you need some flexibility, and and you need you need players to come up and be serviceable and contribute and things like that. But I don't know. I it just I just feel like there is a disconnect between how to actually build a championship team. Like look at look at the Phillies. You know, like they went out and got dudes and like totally changed the fortune of their their franchise. Like they maybe they were a good example of a homegrown core that won a championship, right? With like Rollins and Utley and Hamels and um Shit. I don't know, maybe there was one other person. My know, argument whatever, just fell but, apart because I was going to say, Euclid, Pedroia, Papelbon, Veritek. But that was a good one for the Red Sox, yeah. I, I almost was, I, I was going to say Ortiz, but I forgot they got him from Minnesota. Nope, yeah. Before he started mm-hmm. doing steroids. Steroids. <laughs> Just yep. for all our fans out there, look at David Ortiz when he played at, in Minnesota versus when he played in... <laughs> And isn't it? Oh, and isn't anyway. it so interesting that he and he was also listed in the Mitchell report, and yet he was elected uh-huh. to the Hall of Fame on the first ballot. Uh-huh. But like all the rest of the steroid guys are like not in. Like, why is it that David Ortiz got the pass? Like, it makes no fucking sense. I have no idea. It, it, and he's it, like, obviously, he was a great hitter, but he is half the athlete that A Rod ever. Oh my god! Was. Yeah, and. I'm just saying. Not even close. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, it or drives bonds. me crazy. Yeah. Outside of outside of 1999, where he played 10 games and had a negative 43 OPS plus, he has never had a he never had an OPS plus below 100 though the rest of his career, which is crazy. Yeah. Wow. In in 19 other seasons. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I just said he was a great hitter, yeah. but he could not play the field. Yeah. No. To save his life. Yeah. No. Nothing. Nothing compared to somebody like Bonds no, or A Rod. He looked yeah, like his his he, value was. I mean, yeah, he he had a lot of value as a hitter, but I just first ballot and being connected to the Mitchell report, yeah, and then a Bonds and a an Arod and Clement and all these people that we talked about ad nauseum, yeah, like makes no sense. Yeah, it's so dumb. Yeah, baseball, baseball, uh, the baseball writers, the voters for the for the Hall of Fame, they cannot fucking figure their shit out. They don't know. How, they don't know how what long, they how many, think. How many rounds did it take for Martinez to get Edgar Martinez to get elected? Because remember, there was like the whole big debate about him, you know, just being primarily a DH. Yeah. Wait, like, wait, 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 wait. Say his say his first name again. Edgar. Uh, oh, that was good that time. <laughs> okay, I thought you said Edgar like say? um like uh, Vincent D'Onofrio's wife in Men in Black. Edgar. <laughs> Egger. Egger yeah, right. the the D was not That's clear. What I said. The D okay, was not okay, clear okay. the first time. Oh. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. Valedict going away now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> also, well, I will say while I'm being a Valedic, um, Yamamoto, moto like motorcycle. You were saying Yamamoto like tomato or clamato. Uh, yeah, I think I changed when I when I heard Ethan say it. Though. Okay, okay, good. I yeah. said Yamamoto. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Count, I know. Count oh, I'm Yamamoto. I, oh, okay. I heard you say that. Just because yeah, I'm being, I'm, like, I'm being validated. Okay. I'm being validated. Okay. I see. Okay. All right. Well, I, I mean, a fucking Mike Schur and, and Joe Paz still call. I can't even say. How do they say Glaber's name? Oh, Glaber. Mike Schur says Glaber <laughs> Torres. And it's weird because yeah. Mike Schur is like, he's a validic type person. Like, he. <laughs> like, he. He is. <laughs> He is he is neurotic and and like type A and a and a and a know it all smarty pants and everything, and I don't under and he's such he's such a crazy like detailed like obsessive baseball fan, it, and, and such a and such a Yankee hater like the Yankees are like he thinks about the Yankees more than he thinks about his wife and kids right like by <laughs> by his own admission what is happening to these like. And 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 he still doesn't know how to pronounce Glaber Torres. He says Glaber Torres. It makes no sense at all. Um, I know we could keep talking about the Mitchell Port and and Soto and Otani for all night, but I wanted to before we before we leave tonight, I wanted to mix it up. 
as long as you guys are okay with this. Uh huh. So my thought was, um, and we've done this before, something similar. But but we're going to go back. We're going to go back to this. Well, um, tell me either like your favorite Christmas memory or your favorite Christmas dessert or dish. And and I'll I'll start to give you guys some some thoughts. Uh, you know, Christmas dish. Um, mm. There is so many so many runners up. I mean, I've got um, my my wonderful girlfriend made quiches that we have in the freezer for Christmas morning already. I'm already looking forward to that. Oh yeah, um, nice Christmas quiche. Yeah, oh man, they smelled so good. Uh, every time I go out <laughs> to the the fridge in the garage, I get a whiff of them and like, ah, I want that right now. Um, <laughs> there's like Christmas morning French toasts. Um, one year we did like chili Christmas. And my mom just made like four kinds of chili and just put crock pots out. Everyone was like, "Go at it!" Like, I'm, I'm not making you know, the dishes for everyone for the cousins when they come over. Let's just have chili and be happy. Um, <laughs> you know, there's always my aunt Debbie's cookie tray. I mean, my my mom and dad do their cookies wonderfully, but my aunt Debbie does a a big spread too. She makes those like chocolate things where you smush a Rolo on it on a pretzel with an M&M and it's like well it's like chocolate caramel M&M pretzel mm-hmm. it's like a take five bar all in one those are always delicious uh Christmas memory wise um there's a couple of, I still remember getting my first bike and like mm-hmm. it was dad had them assembled in the garage um didn't I, I noticed that morning that the you know Something was up, but I didn't realize it. That was a big one. Or um, the first video game system we got, where yeah. the, like stashed behind the tree was an unmarked box with the Sega Saturn, and my parents just gave each my brother and I a game that was wrapped up, and they said, "All right," like they're like, "Oh, there's your Sega Saturn." Like, Merry Christmas! And like my brother and I were just confused, like we. What, this is just a game. This is a CD. Like, where is it? And, you know, finally, after minutes of torture or what seemed like hours of torture, my dad's like, oh, there's this box behind the the, the tree. Um, but it's okay. I got my dad back a couple years ago. I gave him a very nice bottle of bourbon, a, a Pappy Van Winkle bottle a couple years oh, ago. Wow. I had one and um, did the same thing to him, wrapped it up in someone else's wrapping paper. Hit it someplace else and said, "Huh, what's this, Dad? Like, open it up. What's this?" And uh, he immediately said, "How much did you spend on this?" And I did <laughs> kind of not to know what he was talking about. So, <laughs> what about you guys? Uh, an actual meal. I I don't have anything that's coming to mind, but my grandma Ziggy, my dad's mo- mom, uh, made Italian pepper cookies. And I used to, I, she used to hide them, uh, not just from me, but from uh, ev- everyone in our family. Cause they were so fucking good. And I knew exactly where they were. So like when we would get to Scranton, <laughs> I would go down into the basement, like after I said hi to everybody and just take as many as I could before everyone else uh, got to them. <laughs> that's a very, that's a very, you know, fat little bat thing to do. <laughs> 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 yep. Yep. And Matt, you know my love for cookies, so yes. uh it, it was it started early. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah, so actually I just made my first pepper cookies this year and the first batch didn't come out as good as I wanted it to and I think I know exactly what I did wrong, but I made a second batch on Monday with Stella and uh it's it's incredibly good. It's just just like and I used my grandma's recipe. Um I just Oh, it's so good. I can't wait to eat another one. So that that's my dish, if you will. And then, Matt, same thing when I was a kid, except my parents had, it was a Super Nintendo system, and they had it on a, uh, like a, a bench, I guess, uh, with wheels, um, but they had a blanket over it <laughs> and everything. So, like, they had it all set up with the TV and everything, and maybe a couple games, probably it was like Donkey Kong, I think, and Mega Man X, maybe maybe right, a couple other. Ones, My mom ones. got it used from from a coworker, um, and everything. But uh, that was that was so fun. More recently, and I know I'm kind of bending the rules here, but um, we just we just got another kid to her first birthday today, 
And um, so, you know, Aria, her birthday is on the 20th. It's, you know, pretty oh, close to know. Christmas, obviously. But um, that's that's always going to be a really special um That's not kind of bending Christmas-y the rules. That's, that's good. That's not bending the rules. <laughs> yeah, sweetest, truly like the sweetest little girl in the entire world. If she gets Stella Smarts, she's she's going places like the it's 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 a good future for her but um it was it was nice to be able to celebrate stella's got a fever <laughs> right now so um it's it was it was a little bit of a wild day trying to do all the birthday stuff and keep stella away and she was upset about it and everything but um yeah uh that's that's my more recent like all right. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with that. Speaking of cookies, I tried a new version of the mint chocolate mint chocolate chip cookies this year. Mm. I didn't make them before I sent you guys your boxes, but I I will make them again. I I ate all of the ones that I made. Um, what what was different? <laughs> um, so the original trick that my dad came up with, or the original recipe, had that those Hershey's mint chips that you mm. melt and stir it in. You melt the chocolate and stir it right into the cookie dough batter. And then you put mm-hmm. the additional chips in at the end. That was like the original trick. And then Hershey doesn't make those chips anymore. Right. So what right. I had done the past couple of years is I found like this Icelandic <laughs> mint dark chocolate bar that I would melt that and mix it into the and then I put the Andes pieces in the the for the chips. Um this year I just melted regular Ghiardelli chocolate chips and stirred mm. them in, but I added peppermint ash- extract instead. So I was like so concerned because they didn't look the same. They were right. like not as dark. And, and Sam had to remind me, like, well, you're not using dark chocolate this year, you, you know, dope. Like you put milk chocolate in there with the extract. And like I tasted one, I was like, oh, yeah, they're pretty good. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so this year it's peppermint extract um, okay. to give that, that minty <laughs> dough flavor. So Nice. Is that like a, a powder? Or something. Um, like it looks. Spice. It looks like um, vanilla, like vanilla extract that you put in, like liquid. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's liquid. Okay. It's clear instead of uh, amber. Okay. Cool. Um, it smells nice. like concentrated peppermint, which is exactly what it is. But um, it was good. It, it worked out well. So I'll, I'll next, I'll probably make another batch before this, the winter's over, and I'll make sure you guys get some. Hell yeah! That sounds awesome. Um. So my lamp light bulbs went out just as Matt was asking the question and I got distracted. But the, so just to, just to clarify, the question was like favorite Christmas meals, um, dish, meal, dish, cookie, dessert. Yeah. Okay. Was and, there a gift and component? or memory and or memory? Okay. Um, all right. Um, <clears throat> this is very interesting. Um, Ethan hates Christmas. He's a Grinch. <laughs> I am a Grinch, but I like the holidays. I like the holidays. I like the spirit and the decorations, and people are usually like kind of cheery and stuff. Um, food. There's 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 only a couple of things that come to mind. Um, my dad makes these cookies. My dad's actually an excellent baker, um, and he makes like homemade pies. He like makes the crust himself, and he makes cookies, and and it's all really good. And he makes these cookies that are like my mom's favorites of all time. And, and they're really delicious. Uh, the, the family refers to them as, as the big O's. And um, it's a chocolate cookie. And there's walnuts inside the cookie. And then there's uh, a couple of mini marshmallows on top. And then chocolate frosting on top of the marshmallows. Ooh, and I'm not like even that into marshmallow. Cookie. What's that? It's like a rocky road. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, exactly. Actually, that's a good oh, way to describe it. That sounds delicious. Yeah, and I'm not really into marshmallows, but like that cookie is is like really good. Um, that's a delicious cookie. And then um, the other meal story that I will tell is what I now refer to as the the great um, or shall we say horrible slash infamous the the smoked paprika incident of 2022. Um, so. <clears throat> My my partner uh, went back east to visit uh, my family with me last last winter for the holidays, right? And uh, and we decided that we wanted to make a dish for my family. That's it's called logman. I don't think I told you guys this story, did I? Maybe this maybe I, I don't know if I texted you about it back then, like a year ago or whatever. Okay, so there's this Central Asian dish called logman, and it's like kind of a noodle dish with um, it's almost like. It's like kind of stewy almost. It's like basically noodles um, with a bunch of veggies and some meat. But like the seasonings are what kind of make it distinctive, right? The seasonings are kind of uh, what you would find in in, in Central Asia. And um, 
so we're we're we we went to this like local Asian grocery store and we got all like a ton of ingredients and we got like a bunch of a bunch of like pork bones to like make a really delicious broth and like all of this stuff and like a bunch of Asian vegetables and we're like really really excited. We get back and we start cooking and everything and we're going through and we're getting the the spices and everything and my partner asks me to get some paprika. And I took out the paprika and the smoked paprika that my parents had. And when we were actually cooking the dish and, and she needed the, the, the spice to put it into the actual dish, I handed her the smoked paprika because in my stupid uh, fucking Neanderthal mind, I thought that smoked paprika and paprika were the same thing. <laughs> and, uh, and then eventually we, you know, hours later, this dish is like fucking laborious and we made a giant portion. Hours later, we finally sit down and we eat and we take our first bite and we're like, hmm, it's it's really smoky. That's 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 weird. Why is it so smoky? And I was like, well, I, I, I mean, I gave you the smoked paprika. I think I think I mean, isn't it that isn't that what you wanted? And and then and then that was when we we realized the 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 enormous blunder that I had made. Um, so anyways, that for for everybody listening, you know, if if you didn't know, smoked paprika is different from regular paprika and um, smoked paprika has a really strong taste. So don't fuck that up. Um, but I am going to, we, we made a really great batch of Lagman recently. And, and I was saying that we maybe, uh, we should make that like our new Christmas Eve tradition. So I think we're going to, on Christmas Eve, we're going to make a, <laughs> we're going to make a batch of Lagman, but this time, uh, we're not, we're not going to, I won't fuck up the seasoning. So hold, hold the um, smoked paprika, hold yeah. the smoked paprika. Exactly. So, um, that, that, that is what comes to mind, even though that's not like a long tradition or anything from childhood. That's like, when you talk about Christmas meals, I think of that. Um, yeah. The other thing that I thought of thinking of like Christmas memories and holiday memories is the fact that like, um, have I told the story about me believing in Santa? Have I told that story on the pod? Okay. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I don't need to tell that story again, but what I was just thinking about right now is how weird it is. I'm wondering what the, like the Venn diagram is of people who don't believe in God, but do believe in Santa. Because when I was a kid, that was me. Like, like I did not believe in God. I grew up without religion. Nobody taught me to believe in God. I didn't believe in God, but I believed fervently in Santa until I was, I don't know, eight or whatever. And, and, and my dad finally broke the news. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I'm very curious now. Uh, there, there, there must be others out there, but um, I, f I feel like it's probably not, not too many people uh, in, in that, in that category. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what came to mind. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff uh -huh. as always uh -huh. alright boys well if you can believe it the next time we do this Ugh. it'll be 2024 and terrible not, not only will it be 2024 but we will have done a podcast together in the year of 2021 22 23 and now 24 Wow, like, I can't believe it's been going on this long. <laughs> I'm shocked, really. Yeah. I, People love us. I thought it was going to happen like once. Colin bugged us about it for so long, and I was like, that's so dumb. I figured we'd do it once, and then I'd be like, okay, all right. And here we are. I, I remember I remember that first time in, in my spare bedroom slash office slash beer storage room in Kentucky. And I was like, oh, that was actually a lot of fun. I, I don't even know what we talked about. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, that Colin's onto something. Shit. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Wait, wait. Was that was that the test one that yeah. we did? Like it was like years a year before, before everything else. Uh, okay, yeah, that, that was like we were still in Syracuse. Yeah. So, did we do a test one that long ago? Yeah. Holy yeah, like 20, shit! Twenty seventeen. It was. Oh, it was. So it I would have been like in Rochester still. Yeah. Holy fuck! Yeah. Okay. That's we, really and we funny. We did it on Skype. <laughs> okay. Well, we've 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 come a long way. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Just think about all the fucking nonsense that we could have talked about for five additional years. Yeah, if yeah. We had just, if we had just done it. If I had just listened to you and not resisted. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it just means it organically grew even better. That's right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, uh, uh, um, happy holidays to everyone out there. Do you guys have any uh, any shout outs you want to do? Hmm. I'll give a shout out to both of you. Uh, been a 
difficult year for a lot of different reasons. Uh, but this has definitely been a lot of fun for me when we have been able to do it and just a, an escape and, and being able to just be with you guys. I mean, just, it just makes me happy. So Aww. no, no jokes. Um, you know, just it's really happy nice. to be able to continue to do this with you guys. And, um, I'll send you a pic when I'm at, hopefully when I'm at the peach bowl on December 30th in Atlanta. Oh, hell yeah. Mm, okay. okay. I didn't realize you're going down. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think I'm going to, as long I was looking at tickets the other day and they're under a hundred, um, not in the Penn state <laughs> section, but you know, I don't really care and how far um, Atlanta's not too far. Right. No, it's like four hours yeah. and it's a noon kick. Oh, so fuck yeah. I can do it a day trip. And I, I already talked to Toddy about it. Yeah, so you should definitely as long go. as the tickets stay down, is I'm it, doing a, a resume review right now for somebody and um basically I'll I'll be able to pay for the ticket and the, the parking um with that. So is, is like, that the uh, Mercedes Benz Dome? Uh Georgia. What or um yeah, Atlanta. Yeah. The, okay, you got the, you got uh, home Falcons. I want you to go to the concession stands and mm-hmm. research the prices. Because of of all of them, oh no! Just just go to a concession stand, right? It is Arthur Blank's big thing was like going to the going to the game with your family shouldn't cost you five hundred bucks in food, like mm, okay. So his big thing is like you know beer is like four bucks or whatever, or five bucks, uh, hot dogs two. Wow, bucks, that'd be great! Know? Oh wow! I want I want the research. I want yeah, I want to report, yeah. report. Yeah, I mean every time I see an NFL beat writer talk about the stadium, I mean they they rave about it. It's it's supposed to be amazing. So that's another reason I want to go. It's just because I've I've heard it's a really, you know, cool experience, but it's just it's so rare that Penn State plays within four hours of me. So yeah. like I and a bowl game. As long too. as the Yeah, yeah, no New Year's six bowl big, game. Yeah, big bowl game. That. Yeah. Yeah. So um Yeah, that'd be that'd be awesome. Yep. All right, boys, any shout outs from you? Hmm. Uh, Jerry Duplantis of Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, just give you a shout out. All right. Way to go, Jerry. <laughs> I don't know where this came from. I just trying to be an asshole and an idiot. No elaboration? Is that a... Oh, all right. no, no explanation. Okay. I was just going to let it go and not even... <laughs> I mean, that would have that would have that would have sealed the joke, but, you know, I... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. I should I should have just been silent. Yeah, can't keep my mouth shut. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> all right, we did it. Right. We did it. Merry See you Christmas, in 2024. Guys. We yeah. are lame. See I you in 2024. Are lame.